Before we get going, if you want to support this video and you're not someone who's part of my Patreon, you can like the video, you can leave a comment, you can subscribe to the channel. If you want to actually financially support me, you can potentially buy yourself some GamerSops, get 10% off my code THORIN THORIN at GamerSops.gg. It's a delicious sugar-free energy drink that doesn't make you spike and crash. It has a nice plateau. Now, this is obviously going to be a video in the vein of the one I did about movies, 10 great movies you've never seen. So this is obviously 10 great albums you've never heard. Now, these are both series that have real legs. They could run and run and run and run. And crucially, it won't just be 10 great or the 10 best or 10 fit. It'll be themes too. Like I've got some interesting ones for movies of like imaginative ones. And then like, you know, like sleeper ones and maybe more about like dialogue and like smaller, smaller sort of um, casts of two or three people that make up a bunch of characters. So the point is, I've not only, and look to say you like music in the modern day doesn't really mean much, but not only am I someone who's been an aficionado of many different genres of music, but crucially, when I was in the first 10 or so years of esports, when I didn't appear on camera, I was someone who used to just sit at home working a lot. And so one of the only things I had was my internet connection and I didn't have much money. So I explored all kinds of movies, music. I went super deep. I used to watch movie a day, a couple of movies a day. I would listen to two or three albums a day. I would put on new albums. I would explore all these new genres, all new types. It's one of the amazing things about when the internet opened up to that rigging. To some degree, it's actually gotten harder to get to some of that stuff. And now it's sort of closed down a bit. And now, especially money is a massive limiting factor, isn't it? So essentially, join me as I take you through 10 albums where I'm quite confident you won't have heard any of them. Maybe you'll have heard one or two, as usual. If you do, if you go, I'm going to do that, then it ain't for you, mate. Wrong saloon, jog on. This ain't your channel. It ain't for you, is it? You're too good for us. So you just nip on. This is for the people who give a fuck. So if you know me, I don't follow trends. I don't actually even really tend to get to that much new music, except for the fact, one thing they have done a good job with algorithms and stuff in the modern day and social media is nowadays you can just follow the Twitter of a favorite artist or have them subs subscribe to their YouTube or the algorithm will serve you a new thing. So that helps me sometimes know music's, new music's coming, but I'm never checking. I don't ever check a chart. I don't even usually ever check their websites and stuff. It's just if it comes to me, it comes to me because I don't really care about the, the newest stuff. I just care about good stuff. So I'll go any year of music. I'll go any any decade, any album. There's, there's not sort of a novelty to me in the same way beyond I like to explore new music, but I don't have to, I don't get bored or something because it's from the 70s or the 80s or whatever. Although I will say, you'll be probably surprised how many modern albums I've put in this list. But as I say, series with legs isn't it? And so I did actually also for this one, as a caveat that like, obviously, just because I hadn't heard of an album when I heard it doesn't mean like most people hadn't. So I also tried to think in that genre, is that like one of the most popular people? Is that their main most popular album? And I even did go and look up on Wikipedia, like some of the album sales and tried to look for people that weren't like certified very high or at all, or it was more obscure, or like they were only on like the Danish chart or something. So here's 10 bangers for you. Number one is going to be Arrowvane, that's the name of the artist, Lilies. And this is an album from 2004. It is a kind of down-tempo, you would say, you wouldn't say hip-hop, down-tempo in the sense that it's not like upbeat. It's more like beats but with like a atmospheric element mixed in. It's more if people know the genre from the 90s, almost like bordering on trip hop because really, so when you do beats like that it can be like a little bit like a hip-hop beat but you're not gonna have some rapping over it. there's no lyrics in pretty much most of these songs it's more like the trip hop angle of the idea of like a, a slightly more imaginative angle on like hip-hop beats electronica used to be the classic genre we called this in the 2000s and the 90s definitely within that i would say there are ambient elements although a lot of what this guy does is beat patterns and i think he has a very satisfying beat pattern uh, for most of the tracks, I think it's very interesting the different types of drum sounds that he'll use to build up his beat patterns. Very, very atmospheric stuff. This is a great soundtrack to have on while you're traveling on a train, on a plane, while you're doing a walk somewhere. Because this is the kind of stuff where even if you were sat at home with headphones in the dark, you would be imagining abandoned cityscapes. You would be thinking of dream realms flying through the air. You'd be thinking of other worlds to explore and cold and hot and greenery and scar scarce, like sort of Arctic aspects. It it's got like a crispness to it. It's got a, um, there is a joy to it at times. There's certainly some melody mixed in there. I think again, if you haven't ever heard of this artist, this is a banger. And if you like things like I mean, some of the trip hop stuff, if you like generally down-tempo stuff, 
if you know Electronica and you haven't heard of this person, I think it's pretty much squared away you're going to get something out of this. There'll be at least a couple of tracks I think you'll enjoy. I think this whole album is really, really good. This is when he really hit his peak. He did some good stuff before. This is his peak, though. Then we're going to go number two, Sky Zoo and Ninth Wonder, Cloud Nine, The Three Day High, and this is an album from 2006, right? If you know Ninth Wonder, Ninth Wonder is a legendary, but here's the problem, to some degree still underground slash not super mainstream hip hop producer. Most famously, his gimmick was, he doesn't just like most of them go and get all the 70s soul samples and then rework them, etc. He also used to famously just use, I don't think he does anymore, but he used to famously for years, including for this album, just do, um, use Fruity Loops, that like super basic editing software. They didn't have all the plugins on, but he was just a wizard. He's just a guy who worked out within that, how to get the most out of it, how to do all the different things. I mean, essentially in that sense, in the modern era, it's almost like he was working with the analog gears back in the day. That's why 90s hip hop and drum and bass sounds very different to modern stuff with all the plugins and all the hardware, as opposed to being analog. I mean, if you listen to Apex Twins music, the difference between the analog stuff, the computer stuff, night and day, isn't it? you can even hear within it. That's one of the reasons I'm so, feel so off about the AI art, generative stuff. There's, I can even tell now when I see it. I, I just see it the second. There's something off it. There's still that uncanny valley end. It's like, ooh, stay away from that. There's something that... It's not that it's, it, it's, it hasn't become human. It, it'll never be human. That's the key thing. So the point here is, this is a very... Like, what I love about his style is he was a throwback guy. It's if you like the 90s DJ premiere and stuff like that, he's got that style of production. Really, really good at getting the soul sample to be really cool and then build it into like a bouncy hip-hop beat. Sky Zoo's just kind of like a good... Like, the above average, like generic rapper, but he has good enough lines. And it's all about you know, the streets, you know, they're pushing the pound, you know, you know, all that jazz. The point is, if you know great rap music, I think it's more about actually the instrumental, and then usually the it's the other way around, as opposed to the background beat me, nothing, you just listen to the lyrics. It's more like you let the lyrics just flow, and they just mean it's not too repetitive for the music itself. So, I think this is one of his all time greats. He did some other great stuff, like he did that remix album of Nas. God's son or whatever it was at God's stepson. That was a fucking banger too. This is really, really, really good. And what I love about this one is not only the first three, four, five tracks, you're just like, what the hell have I never heard of this one? I, like, I've heard of him, but as in, you'll be like, what? No one ever recommends me this for hip hop. Especially with all that crap mumble rap stuff they do and all this stuff where everyone's just taking prescription pills now. It's just whack. What a dog shit fucking genre that's become at this point in time. And so, to me, one of the really cool things also about this album, like a lot of Ninth Wonder albums, especially ones he did with specific artists, is it has a really nice thematic approach. You'll see how there is a, a consistency to the style of production, the style of songs. There is variance within that, and there are some bangers. It's just a really satisfying album. And if you like a couple of tracks, you probably like the whole album. This is not really one that you skip a track. Number three, this isn't in any order, by the way. Is going to be, because I thought, should I do it by year or whatever? But I thought, nah, screw it. Let's, let's bounce around. This is going to be, people know, one of my all-time favorite groups, secondly, one guy, but he obviously needs the other people to play the instruments, is the Cinematic Orchestra. Now, for this, it's actually going to be an appropriate name, but don't get thrown off by, like, the cinematic part and the orchestra part. Usually their music isn't actually, like, soundtracks to movies, and it isn't with an orchestra. It's usually, essentially, a new jazz band. If you know about new jazz, it's not the same as jazz, classic, traditional jazz. And usually it's just really delicious new jazz and it's by this genius guy Jason Swincore who's the guy who actually also runs like Ninja Tune label if you don't know with all those famous other artists in the down tempo the whatever all these different funky albums etc IDM EDM all electronic loads of that shite um lots of jazz jazz and over type stuff so what's amazing about this one though is this is the crimson the cinematic orchestra but it's uh, the soundtrack to a documentary called The Crimson Wing, Mystery of the Flamingos. I believe it's actually like a French documentary or something. So it would obviously be in French, but I'm not going to... Shucks is not going to say it because I have to do it in English to do the accent. So it is The Crimson Wing, Mystery of the Flamingo. And what makes this amazing is, you don't even have to have seen this documentary, but I've never seen it, is I love this guy anyway. And he's really, really good when he has like a jazz... A uh, fucking saxophone guy and a jazz guitar, a funk guitarist and like a drummer that's really sick and a soul singers from America. But when he put his mind to this and actually got a real orchestra behind him, mate, the way he can made this music, I can imagine it must make the documentary incredibly emotional because this is one of those music pieces of music where 
You can just go on. There's a reason why loads of the YouTube comments will be people like, I had this played at my father's funeral. Like, I will never forget. Love you, dad. Bye forever. Because it's that sort of music. It's that sort of way. When it hits its height, it's soaring. You actually feel your spirit rise. You understand what art is supposed to be. It's supposed to draw you up to the heights of what the mind, what experience, what a human being can experience. It's not supposed to be bass. <laughs> Uh, catchy, uh, oh, he's saying disrespectful stuff that he's getting away with. <laughs> this is great. Oh, is everyone loving this? If I tell people I like this stuff, no, this is the shit that you just listen to on your own with headphones. And I tell you what, you might cry to some of this. Yeah, you heard me. I just think that guy's an amazing musical mind. And when he had mastered his skills after enough time, he got this orchestra. Mate, this is what classical music should sound like in the modern day. If this is what classical music sounded like, it changed the world. I'm telling you, this is some really next level stuff. One of the all-time grits. There's tracks on here that are some of my favorite pieces of music ever recorded. Number four is going to be Arcturus, The Sham Mirrors from 2002. Now, this is a like black metal, death metal, metal Nordic metal type angle. But if you know me, that ain't my set of genres. That ain't, those aren't my subgenres. And if you're going to be good in that, but I'll never ju prejudge. If you are exceptional and extremely unique within those genres, then I might like the album. But I'm not the guy who like, even though there'll be a little bit of that on this, there'll be a little bit on something coming up soon. This is just really good stuff, though. Like, one of the main things is, I don't like it to be excessively wanky when it's doing the melodies and the music. This is right in the sweet spot. Now, what's funny is, already you've done the Thor intake after that, because this is supposed to be the second best of the album stated. You're all supposed to say, for art house reasons and avant-garde metal reasons, mm, I prefer the Le Masquerade Infernal and... Um, the range on it, and the it's, it's more of a classic album. And no, I don't care. This one's way better, in my opinion. This is a great one from beginning to end. First of all, it is the era, just like that last album, when they had Garm from Over, the main singer and the main musical influence behind the band Over, who I think is incredible. And were people who, if you don't know, changed from like Norwegian metal to like everything. They did like jazz. They've done like atmospheric music. They've oh, they've done all sorts of amazing. They've done religious themed music, like not even in the metal genre. They've, done some, they've even done some modern like 80s type pop music. They're a really incredible band and they have such a crazy catalog. True artists, in my opinion. Now, there is one angle I will throw in here, which is a bit more tricky for me, which is even though I can in movies still sort of like let flight of fancy fly and stuff. Let's be real, like the part of the theme of this genre of music is sort of like a satanic angle. And there's a lot of that within the that the, the Masquerade Infernal particularly, but there's even some parts in here and it is about like demonic element. But even so, if you can get past that, this is a really, really good metal album. It is melodic, even though it also is very much metal. It can be very hard at times, but it can be soft too. They'll bring in piano melodies at times, but it has the thrashing guitars and the great riffs and the hooks and the... It has that, if, if that's the thing you're into for some reason, it just doesn't matter on this one because it's so good, you won't mind it if you're not a big fan of it. I would say check this one out. There's some really, really nice tracks on here that are going places you probably didn't imagine from this genre of music. Then, similarly, I'll give you one more in a similar sort of vein, and I'm going to go Winter Sun, the self-titled album of 2004. This was the guy who, where from memory, I think he was in that other group called like Ensiferum, which had some good stuff as well. This is Finnish death slash black metal, and it is incredible. Like, in the modern day, if it wasn't for the fact copyright fucks you, obviously, on CSGO movies, like, mate, some of these, any of the first four tracks could be like frag movie soundtrack, and it'd be really good. If you put it with some sick banger, like a Nico, a K Serato, Someone of like twists and you had this music behind it it'd be like one of the great frag movies of all time because part of the secret of frag movies amazing frags amazing music combo together it becomes something else it becomes like a synthesis into something elevated that's why famously you start to love the music more if the frags are good enough and if you love the music enough you start to love the frag and then if you go both that's when you ascend in it this is just really really good. super melodic super melodic it's one of the things I actually love about the Finnish aspect of metal in that sense compared to some of the Swedish and Norwegian stuff then we're going to completely change tax by going to number six, Alan Holdsworth, 
IOU from 1982. If you don't know Alan Holdsworth, he was in groups like UK. He's basically an amazing prog rock guitarist. And this is his first, like, this is his proper, like, solo album. And he is, in my opinion, like, a genius slash a virtuoso with the guitar. Now, if you've never heard this style and you haven't heard much prog music, you might think ah, a lot of this just sounds like noodling or, like, riffing. But it isn't. It's not just, like, jazz improv. He's not just wanking around. It's going somewhere. He's building up, like, patterns within there. He's going in circles. He's adding very variations every now and then he's having aspects essentially if you love a singer who can do all different aspects of range and things with their voice and go all over the place and show you like the scope of what the voice can do that's what he's going to do with the rock guitar with the prog rock guitar and this is just one of the primos in the genre but a lot of people either have only heard of him and like oh one of those guys from the 70s or something. but they haven't dug into it and this is one of those albums i do think it's criminally underrated despite the fact people do know king crimson pink flight Pine, park your pine tree they don't go back and listen to this stuff and this is just really really good stuff number seven this one i feel like might actually be one of the albums where if someone's from the metal genre actually they probably have heard this one but the point is if you haven't heard of like this sub genre this is in i don't think there's a chance you've heard of it because there's no way it sold much money many at copies and it is arion the human equation from 2004 by the way the iou one was from 1982 if i didn't say this is a prog metal opera concept album. Now, that sounds shit if you don't know that prog rock can be good, if you don't know that prog metal exists, if you think that, like, an opera or a concept album means it has to just be silly and just wanky and you do that, like, as, like, almost an art student to show off and be pretentious and rather than that, you just do a really good album. This is where it's everything those things should be. It's an opera in the sense that it has these different acts and sort of voice acting that makes it really cool, as almost as a story to it. Then it's a concept album in the sense that it's exploring different emotions and aspects of life and experiences and when you grow up and what it's like to have pain and jealousy and love and hope and love all over the place and then also it's super melodic super and it doesn't it's not afraid to get soft and to go to almost a happy to and then to go into harshness and think oh this is amazing and as i say amazing voice acting the difference in the styles of the singers and when the singers are used really makes for the music to be very unique i'm sure if someone knows this group they've instantly heard of this if all the sub genre yeah you probably have heard of it but i don't think beyond that so i was willing to take a risk on this one and if you never heard at all i think you'll actually be surprised by this you'll really be surprised number eight is going to be the thermals fucking a and it's from 2004 this is an amazing modern punk album. One of the things that's great about it is one of those ones where if you like the first couple of tracks, it's all like that. You're going to love it. That's one thing about punk that's very good. If you like old bad religion or the Ramones or the Misfits, it's obviously, you get into it. It's that style with variations and they stay within their little lane, don't they? And that's what makes them brilliant though. That's what you really enjoy about it. They're not somebody who does like a couple of good albums. Then shuts in, they're coming, ah, oh, I brought in these like African drums and then this like uh, pan pipes. And then I decided to have like a, like a, um, a Tibetan monk throat and you're like bro you were doing like fucking throwback hip-hop like what's what is this what you've just met too many friends and had too many fucking tuna sandwiches and art exhibits or something i don't know feet that's how that's how poor i am that tuna sandwich <laughs> can appear there whatever is like next level to me so i just think this is something where what I love about it is it's the low production style that also gives it its charm and makes it feel raw, makes it feel like punk. And again, this is another group, by the way, if you like this album, you probably like everything they've ever done. But this is this is what I thought was the sweet spot of really good, not too, not too well known. And I think it's going to surprise a lot of people, even maybe within the punk genre. A rock album next. So you, I'm going to have to be careful if you've never heard of this. I don't think you've ever heard of this. Even if you've heard of some of the bands I'm about to say. It is an album by someone called Auf de Mauer. So Melissa Auf de Mauer is her name. And it's a self-titled album, Auf de Mauer, from 2004. She was the former bassist of the group Hall, Courtney Loves Band. I don't even know that band, so I can't tell you if that, they were any good or not. And she was like a, a stand-in bass at one point for the Smashing Pumpkins, but obviously wasn't the original one or whatever. So look, she's got some, the point is she has like industry cachet and she uses that on her solo album to get some sick collab artists. Just go on Wikipedia and look at the collab artists she's got and you'll realise why well, this album's really good. Even obviously she's playing the bass and some of them are playing the guitars and, and she's singing, obviously. Right, this is a really great modern mock 
Ark album. It's so catchy. The fucking hooks and the riffs and the bass work is really, really nice. Then she's got all just these brilliant, like, people from the Smashing Pumpkins, the Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, it's, it's really good, man. I, it's amazing people haven't heard of this album. It's nuts. And actually, her voice really fits this style, and she does keep it within a certain thematic sort of range for the music and the singing. I think it just goes together great. It's just a great modern rock album. And if you haven't heard it, enjoy. This is going to be a very easy one to get into, in my opinion, especially if you like any of the aforementioned bands. The last one, I've mentioned it in AMAs, but I'm going to do it here because it's amazing. Considering there is a subgenre, they essentially, I think, invented that even within that subgenre, a bunch of people haven't heard of them. So you might know the subgenre I'm a big fan of called post rock. You know, it's often described as like quiet, quiet, loud, 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 quiet. Quiet, loud, quiet, quiet, loud. Where it's like 12 minute songs, you go all over the place, you have like all, you might have like four guitars. Now, I love the groups like Godspeed, you New Black Emperor, A Silver Mount Zion, uh, Explosions in the Sky, all these guys. Yeah, Mega Mogwai, you all know these more famous ones. But it's the group, they were an 80s like new wave type rock band called Talk Talk. And if you ever go listen to their stuff from there, you're going to be like, what? And I was like, what? Until someone told me, no, you've got, this is different, mate. You like that post-truck stuff, yeah? You've got to listen to this because this is true art, in my opinion. They reach the heights of emotional tension and resonance with how they build into this. They don't go fast at all. They just slowly build into the, the big parts of the music. The voice of the singer, it was just all right for the 80s stuff. It is transcendent for this type of music. Somehow he can capture this emotion in his voice and his voice becomes, I would even describe it as the way he sings, his voice almost becomes like a brass instrument. It becomes added into it to add, to soar over the top of it. And this is another album where the peaks of emotion you can hit are really, really special. And it is also a very coherent piece. It's nearly like a concept album, especially because, as like I say, I think they inadvertently, this was the proto slash like predecessor to post rock. I think this album essentially is one of the ones that invented that genre, even though they didn't know it themselves. Then I've done the 10, haven't I? But I'll give you a little bonus. Now, obviously, when I was going through, I would have to say, right, if someone technically listed it as an EP, even if it was like 40 minutes long, which could be an album, I'll say EPs are separate. So I'll probably do another piece in the future of like EPs. For that one, by the way, I might even do it like EPs of artists you've heard of, but you just haven't heard this EP if you've only heard the big albums. That would be an interesting way. But I'll give you a little freebie, just something at the end, because I didn't put any drum and bass in, you'll notice. So what I'm going to do is this. There's an EP by someone called Wisp, an electronica IDM artist, and it's called Selected Ambient Works 2 Reworked from 2004. For some reason, bizarrely, 2004 was a banger year for all these obscure things. Also shows when I was getting super deep in all types of different music, right? Now, what's interesting is this is obviously Aphex Twin, Selected Ambient Works 2, one of the all-time great al al ambient albums. But famously, it doesn't feature beats on the Aphex Twin, right? It's very, um, it was stuff here. He said he did it from lucid dreams or like drug experiences. Well, as a result, what Wisp did was take a few of the tracks and just put very satisfying, even an album brick, beats behind them and gave a whole new life to some of the tracks, which it's not that they're better, but they're different and they're very, very good. So this is technically an EP. I'm throwing it in there as a bonus, but, and it's also, I think it might even be free to download on the internet if you go look. I think it's even on archive.org or something. This is one where if you know anything about Electronica, IDM, Drum and Bass, you've never heard of this, and especially if you like Airfax Twin, you are in for a treat. By the way, if you want to know more about my musical tastes, one of the people from my Discord, it was even before he was on my Discord, a guy called Dan Roll, has actually composed a YouTube playlist where, look, he doesn't do it daily, but he gets around to adding the new one. He just goes through my Twitter feed. And when I post music there, which I've done for years and years and years, that's actually one of the reasons I think my Twitter feed also grew. He would take that and put it into a playlist. And currently, there are 855 tracks on there. So if you go, uh, the link will be in the description. If you go there, there's plenty more to explore before I do my next one. Here on my side channel, I, of course, explore my non-esports interests, but the increased amount of videos that I'm able to put out and about however many topics is in large part thanks to the following people, PP Nomula, Realm. Now, do you want to choose the topic that I focus on next out of a series of them? Maybe you want to ask a question for my next AMA. There'll be a thread coming real soon after the first one. Would you like teasers to find out who the upcoming guests are for For Inquiry? Maybe you want to take part in a private, never-to-be-published discussion with yours truly. Well, if so, then heed this call to action and join Thor Inside today, where? Via the Patreon link in the description box below.